Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a yet another week of Downshift Racing. This week we are back with Megan Star's All-American Classic Race Series and we are on Grand Valley Highway South Reverse. This one was a very interesting one that we've been looking at for quite a bit of time now. I think for the last two weeks we've actually been on and off kind of practicing this course. This course is highly technical and is in the reverse format from what we're normally typically used to. We've collectively as a group ran Grand Valley Highway numerous times and actually later in this week we run it again in its normal configuration. But this, just this week, uh, we're for this certain specific race, we're doing the south reverse configuration and it was just very odd because you've got these really weird corners that we're not used to driving the wrong way around and we're in these big heavy American muscle cars so trying to get them to navigate these corners and be a being able to get up to speed but also keep in mind we don't have any assists whatsoever no traction control no ABS so there are these really tight banked corners that have a lot of elevation change and it was very challenging in the best way of working this course with these types of vehicles and as we get into the race here you guys probably saw immediately that I went from a very nice fifth position out of nine all the way back down to ninth place first corner well actually technically second corner he comes up to me just barely nails me on the back corner I you know go out into the dirt I'm not too mad about it it just you know it's racing it happens and I go off on my way and after this first lap it's just trying to catch back up and finally by the next lap I actually come across Flanders and Ring having their own issues I don't know if they had collided with one another or if it was just you know Flanders had spun out and then Ring was you know, staying back to not get collected by it, not sure, but I was able to do a very nice double overtake while getting past the two of them, and I was promoted up into sixth place. And from here, this was kind of a massive majority portion of my race. It was continually to try to keep my car on the track, getting as consistent lap times as possible, Occasionally, we'd come across a yellow flag, and sure enough, it was Ring who had unfortunately spun out again, so we'd do have to do another uh, lap around him, and it just, that, just trying to make sure that we're not getting into trouble was really the main point of this game here, because there are so many people that were struggling very much with trying to get their car's power down in the right way, where, you know, coming out of corner and you lay onto the power just a little bit too early, and suddenly you're just spinning out. It makes this whole thing incredibly difficult and, like I said, challenging in the best of ways. For those of us who have been here a while, who have really gotten our cars tuned up, honestly, a very fantastic race to really test our abilities with these vehicles. Again, very weird track, but very cool. So, like I said, a lot of us had gotten a good amount of practice in with this course in our vehicles, just really trying to get a groove down to feel what it would be like to drive and, and to feel out what a good lap time would be in our respective vehicles that we have chosen. And one of the cool things about this race was actually to see Magnum performing very well. He was able to keep his nose clean all through all the first lap dramas and it was really nice to see him up and being competitive because there are a lot of times where he just has like an early lap mistake and then he's just at the back of the pack but again to see him performing so well in this race so competitively was awesome to see so we're up on coming up to lap nine and through this entire time just watching that gap close up trying to put in the best lap times that i possibly can bulldog and paven and omar were just really out and about up in that front part of the field they were getting 107 lap times 108 and I'm sitting in the 110s, 109s, 111s, not quite there. So I knew I wasn't going to be all the way up there, but I knew that I could be solidly in midfield. So like I said, coming up on Magnum in lap 9 here, 
and we're getting just on the backside of the tunnel and he outbreaks himself and I'm able to make a very clean pass up into fifth position. I think I have some sort of, you know, a kind of ha-ha commentary to it. I'm just like, well, I guess your talent must have outbroke you or something. God damn it. Let's yeah, get back here. No. Yes. Your screw up gave me the place. Talk to you. God talk to your screw you. up. Talk to your screw ups before you talk to me. Okay. Well, come on, 429. Go give him a bite. Him. F you. <laughs> <laughs> My car is driving beautifully right now, so none of that. Sh Lap 15 comes about. And I am solidly in my groove now. Again, looking at these lap times. They are in the low 111s and the high 110s. Occasionally you spit out a 109. And we're getting to one of the last sectors, one of the last parts of the course. So sector one is just like the back straight up into the tunnel and the first couple of corners. Sector two is this very tight technical area. And then Sector 3 is basically uh, launched straight into a chicane back into, like, the main street. So at the end of Sector 2, what would normally be a downhill section up into the technical part, part of Grand Valley Highway, is now a technical part into an uphill. So with all this minute elevation changes, I hit something just a little bit wrong, and I don't know if traction control would have saved me, but in these instances, it just grabs my car and it just throws it. And I get thrown off into the dirt. I don't quite hit the wall, thankfully, but I'm having this moment where I'm backing up. I'm trying to reverse. I'm trying to get the car facing in the right way. And it's just really not working for me. And of course, Magnum's on the intercoms laughing at me because I kind of laughed at him and rightfully so I made fun of him so I was in the Ron there to get made fun of and as he goes by so does Flanders so now I've got a mission that I've got two laps left maybe and I gotta make up two positions but with all this issues that I've had I am solidly a couple of seconds down I know I've got the pace that I can catch up, but to make those final moves stick is going to be something else. So some things that I've discussed occasionally with these races is it's not always about what your driving ability is. Sometimes there's a little bit of mental games that are played every now and again. And Flanders is a very good driver. He's a lot of the times very up there. I think with this American Classic Series, he doesn't have the car tuned quite the way that he wants it to. The AC Cobra is very rear end happy. But this time, you know, as we saw in the beginning, he was just kind of staying towards the back of the pack, not making a huge amount of noise. And when it came to the last couple of laps, we're having to deal with lapped cars quite a bit. You know, we'd come up our own ring, so we'd have to maneuver around him. You know, Bulldog and Paven are just fighting it out at the front of the grid, so we're trying to make way for them. In the middle of all of these cars being unlapped, Flanders just makes a move on Magnum and nobody bats an eye. Oh, 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 totally oh. bad for you. On your left, Justin. And come to find out, a couple of seconds later, Magnum goes, Hey, wait a minute. I just gave up my position without realizing it. Hey, come back. Oh, I shouldn't have let you by. I should have blocked you. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. I thought you were in third, you position. son of a sneaky son of a... <laughs> <laughs> so now Magnum is driving hard. He's, like, trying to make up that position. And hearing all of this on the intercons, I'm just hoping that their battling takes up some time. When you're focused on your lap times and you don't have traffic and you've got some clear air, your lap times are amazing. But when you start adding some battles in there... Sometimes the opponent that you're fighting against is backing you up or you're making some lunges into some mistakes. Your lap times kind of tumble. So I'm hoping that they're battling neck and neck really gives me an opportunity to catch up. And coming up on the last couple of corners of the last lap, I'm getting mighty close. If I got another lap, I might have been able to make it work. Hell, even if I had a couple more corners, I could have made a, a good pass work. But in this situation, it just wasn't enough. I finished only a couple of seconds behind Magnum. As in the final order is 
Flanders, Magnum, and myself. Race two is Group B on Road Atlanta. This one, too, we had seen coming from a little bit of time as well and had gotten a little bit of practicing in as well. I want to say on Wednesday and on Thursday, I had just got down and just started working on figuring out what the right car was. And I want to say earlier, I jumped on really early on Thursday with a couple other people, and we were sitting there going, well, the Audi Quattro isn't, like, it's fast. But there's so many corners that it just doesn't seem to perform very well with. So after trying a couple of different cars, it was settled on the Nissan GTR and had a couple of people in that lobby with me as we're going through just trying to figure out the best possible racing line, the braking points and everything. And originally I was doing okay-ish with the Quattro, but as soon as I swapped to the GTR and got some additional tips from some of these other guys in here, I started to get some very good lap times that I'm like, okay, the Nissan GTR can be pretty competitive. So I'm not sure it's a car that I'll be using every week, but it just, it seems like I captured lightning in a bottle for a moment, or it just, for me at least, it was the best car for this track. And when we get into our lobby, I'm making some noise about it, how it's like, it's a pretty decent car. And suddenly half the grid swaps. <laughs> So suddenly it's myself, it's Ring, his brother, Michelangelo, we've got Paven, we've got Shio, we've got all sorts of these people that normally don't do the GTR suddenly swap to it and we're going, ah, so this might be the car for this race. So these opening laps are absolutely nuts because we've got both uh, Magnum and Shane are using the Ford Focus, which has some crazy straight line speed. So it's good for solid half the course. But these Nissan GTRs and their all-wheel drive just handle the corners like something else. So we're all just going for it here. And it was very nice having that amount of practice that I had because... I was able to start pushing the limits of my ability and figuring out where track limits were. And for the first couple of laps, unfortunately, I just happened to push a little bit too hard in more than a number of occasions where you get, grab some track limit penalties. But I knew that I had the pace there that I would be okay grabbing some penalties here and there because I knew with the practice that I had, I figured that I might have just an extra edge over the people that may have not had as much practice. So I was okay grabbing some of these penalties, but it's just getting really annoying where it's lap after lap, lap after lap after lap, where I'm just getting another penalty here, another penalty there. Normally, it was, I want to say it's about turn eight, which is right before the back straight. I'd be getting a lot of the penalties, just going a little bit wide. And then another common spot for me was just in that middle chicane part, part of sector one with all the technical corners. You just go a little bit wide, take a little bit too much grass, and you just grab a quick half second to second penalty. But yeah, just watching this first lap back, it's just incredible seeing all the places being traded. There were some interesting moments where some people were taking some rather opportunistic moves that maybe played out to be a little bit dirty, but again, I would just call them down, understand that I would have my moment. I'd be able to get by them and eventually. And sure enough, I would. It was fairly interesting to see a number of people changing up what they would normally be using to different vehicles. And it was very interesting to see as well how this was very almost vehicle-based, how these results would turn out. Paven would be a little bit as an outlier in the Nissan GTR, but then after that, we'd move down to the Subarus and then it would be the giant pack of Nissan GTRs with the Ford Mustang in the middle of it and then ending with the Ford Focuses at the back and it was just incredible to see at the beginning it was very apparent that the uh, Subarus and Paven would take off into the distance with Drew and his Ford Mustang but then all of these battles that would occur all for position within places four through eight 
all of these different Nissan GTRs just going at it. We didn't really have, we changed a little bit of the tune, but I think for the most part, they were pretty standard. Uh, I mean, some people might have had slightly different suspension tunes, but it's just everybody, because they were swapping to this new car, didn't really have much of a chance to really dial in the suspension. So I don't know if it was, if I had, just because I had played it a little bit longer, or if it was just the fact that I had a little bit more practice and I was able to get into a very good groove with it. I was feeling very, very comfortable with this car. So yeah, some of these fights here, absolutely crazy. And again, it's if I were to be able to stay out of the track limits, I wonder where I would have been at the very end because the amount of time that it lost due to these stupid penalties, lap after lap, they're just absolutely irritating. But it would not be very long until I'd be able to make back up that place that I would potentially lose at the penalty line there. So after the absolute chaos that the first half of the race had evolved from, we started to finally get into a pretty good groove where I stopped having so many fights where I was able to just make my way through the pack and was able to finally get out up into about fifth place. And this time here, like I said, I got my groove. I had practiced the hell out of this car on this track. I felt confident, I felt comfortable, and my goal was set on the front of the pack. And all these laps down, I would be focusing on that gap between myself and Drew, and just, I would see it whittle away. And for the most of the race, I didn't have a whole lot to say because I was just trying to stay in the groove, trying not to mess up, trying not to do anything stupid that would make me get another penalty or, you know, have a small little screw up where I'd go wide and spin out into the grass or something. I just needed to focus on my pace and my race. And honestly, I was very happy with my lap times because I had quite a bit of coaching from Paven and... Yeah, looking through, he was able to throw down like 124, but my lap time was 124.9 and 124.6. These lap times were absolutely spectacular, so I was very happy to see that I was able to be very competitive. If I didn't have so many issues in the front, in front side of the race, if I was able to keep it a little bit cleaner, maybe not have so many fights, maybe not have so many, many penalties, I wonder if I could have finished the podium. But at this point, it was pretty well decided that my lap times just weren't good enough to catch up to the front pack. Finally, at the end of lap 10, I'm getting really close to Drew, and I'm on the intercoms going, hey, man, I'm not really fighting for position here. I just want to catch up to the front bit of the pack. If we can work together, we can bump draft, because we're pretty consistent. I was, I was only gaining on him a couple of tenths of a lap. That wasn't anything crazy. But at the end of lap 10, he just can see and says, you've got the pace. Go get a man. Drew, I ain't fighting for position right now. I'm trying to get up front, all right? You want a bump draft? I'll give you one. If you get me down the hill, go. Here, I'll just give it to you. <laughs> I was all right, coming. Go. Thank you. So then, like I said before, I just then focused on my race. I just put my head down and tried catching up to the front bit of the pack. It was very evident that, again, my pace at this point started to fall off a little bit, where I don't know if it was because I was in the slipstream of Drew or if it was I was starting to lose focus or my tires were starting to go or something. I started to dip into the 125s pretty consistently and I could see the podium group up ahead of me, but it just never was enough to really get away with catching up to him. I think they were still more than 10 seconds ahead of me, so it just really wasn't there. Good news was, is that both Flanders and Bulldog running the Subaru WRX sounded like that they had some incredible battling as they were just on the intercoms most of the time going on the inside or on your left, on your right, you know, coming on up or that kind of stuff. And, and by the end of it, it sounded like it was a very close finish and they were just absolutely ecstatic to be in the podium place. So 
for me to be coming up from eighth place and to have all the fighting that I did at the very beginning to end up in fourth place, there is still a big enough gap to the front podium that it just really wasn't feasible to catch them. But honestly, I felt like that I had a very good race. And yeah, it was just, it was awesome. Road Atlanta is a fantastic course. I've started to grow to love it quite a bit from the circuit experience and then driving it a little bit on Forza Motorsport 7. And it's just amazing race, really fun stuff. And now for the Sunday race. This one was a very unique race for a lot of different reasons. First being that it was limited to 850 power points. And here's the kicker, electric vehicle only. So you'd be sitting there going, well, it's 850 electric vehicles. They've got all sorts of Vision Gran Turismo vehicles that you can use and you can do this and that and this, that, the other thing. It turned out that there were just not a lot of options for this category, mainly from the standpoint that when it comes to, you know, like other categories, you can just simply, if your car isn't up to the power point limit, you just add on a turbo, you, you know, do some engine tuning balance upgrades, you do some polished parts or bore outs or bore ups or whatever. And you just add and add and add and add and add uh, engine upgrades until you get to the power points. Vice versa, if you're over the power point limit, you just take stuff off. You know, you add in power restrictors, you add ballasts, you detune the ECU. When it comes to these electric vehicles, though, you've got the electric motors, you got the tires, you got the ballasts. I think that's really about it. I don't even think that power restrictors even really do much. I think you might be able to adjust the ECU slightly to adjust the power output, maybe. But there are just really no tuning options when it comes to electric vehicles at all, which made for... We had about four or five... Not even. We had about four different electric vehicles that we were using for this race, and that was about it. At the front, we had the Hyundais, and then we had the majority of everybody running the Audi VGTs. I was using the Volkswagen IDR, and then we had a couple other ones doing... I want to say it was the Skoda VGT and whatnot. And, again, there were just not a lot of options. And the track being Grand Valley Highway was also a very interesting choice as well because there are a lot of spots where you can get some really good speeds and these electric vehicles in higher speeds handle pretty well because you got a pretty good amount of downforce going. But depending on the, the certain electric vehicle that you chose... There, a lot of them are pretty heavy, so when it comes to the slower technical corners, they really did not handle well. And then you had all sorts of power that they would just be very easy to spin out. You know, not a lot of grip in the back tire, so they would just kick out really quickly. So it's just these heavy, bulky, like lots of power to the rear wheels really clunky in these tight corners but incredibly quick in the straights made for a very unique very interesting experience so not only did you have these big heavy bulky quick cars there are a couple other interesting things to keep note as well that when it comes to some of these vehicles depending on where the electric motor is if it's like an all-wheel drive car or if it's a rear wheel drive car Depending on how it handled, some of these cars are notorious for chewing up their tires. And it was crazy to see which ones, if you're running softs or mediums, if like if they would even last more than five laps, or you just go, I got no grip in the front left anymore, because it's just this all-wheel drive variation of the car is just pulling too much on this tire. It's just degrading it so fast. And the other thing, too, to keep in mind was because they are electric, we don't have much of a choice when it comes to fuel. It's just kind of like it is what it is. Like, you can keep track of the battery usage, but there isn't a way to, like, be able to adjust the power output, which would have been nice. I feel like 
that these cars should have an ability to adjust the power draw, kind of like, you know, fuel map. But for whichever reason, they don't, which is a little bit unfortunate because for the car that I chose, that would have been a huge, huge difference. Some of these other people were able to get away with getting their cars chosen perfectly. I think the Hyundais didn't even need a pit once. I'm trying to remember, but I think an Audi might have needed a pit for tires at some point. My car, it had an incredible amount of grip in the first kind of back and forth spot in the track. And it didn't do too bad in the slow corners either. The problem was is that it just ate the battery. I would get not even five laps out of it. So I would get into the pits. Thankfully, the pits didn't take too long. I'd have to charge it, wait 20, 30 seconds, and then be out on my way. And because of the car that I chose, it just... It didn't end up the way that I wanted it to. I did not give this course enough practice. I did not give the car choice enough thought. I didn't listen to everybody in chat before the race and go, well, I think I'm getting a little bit more fuel with the Hyundai than I am with the Audi. The Volkswagen IDR is an incredible vehicle. Let me be the first to say it was not the right choice here. And because I'm dealing with this new car that I haven't driven yet, really, I'm breaking way too late. I'm, you know, just locking up. I'm getting these penalties left, right, and center. And I know that I need to be pitting way too often, and it's just not going my way. What do you do? This race, I just pit four times, I want to say. And I was thinking, I'd, it was about lap 15 or 14. I've got two laps left in the tank, and I'm going, okay, so I'll probably want to... I'm going to have to pit anyway. So I pit actually a little bit earlier than I needed to, thinking, okay, so what I can do is, for the last two laps to the end, I can just really go hard. And uh, the IDR actually has a drag reduction system, a DRS button, that also drains the battery but you do get quite a bit of speed difference in the straight so i was thinking to myself okay if i've got any close battles i can really just use up the battery and be fine and then it turns out a lap later it's the final lap because i've hit so many times and now a lap down i'm like oh my god no and those last couple of laps i was just i pit a little bit too early and i'm you know starting to just really be on the coasting and then I'm like okay so then I'll pit and then I'm going hard and then it's just and then it was over so I'm sitting there going like okay so if I did a little bit more coasting in some of the earlier laps knowing that I would need to pit maybe one less time because I think the pit only was good for that one last lap so if I would have started coasting the lap or two earlier than I did I think I would have been pretty all right it's just I don't think it would have been any much of a difference to where I ended up. I finished in 8th out of 10 people because unfortunately Shane dropped. That was another interesting point. Shane goes into the pits and he gets a glitch and his car just sits there. We're thinking that it's just taking a while to refuel but apparently there must have been a glitch where he hit and like don't fuel or don't change tires or something. So after a minute and a half he's like I'm out. I'm done. Which is really unfortunate. So at the end, I was promoted to 8th out of 10 people, which I would have finished in ninth out of 11 people originally. But yeah, it just... The learning experience for this week, as you can tell, did a lot of practicing on the Tuesday race. Finished very well, in my mind. Not as well as I could have done, but I f finished well and you know felt competitive. Thursday... Really practiced, got the car choice, got the setup right. Finished fourth. Amazing. Great competitive race. Awesome. Sunday. Didn't spend more than 15 minutes practicing. Didn't spend more than 15 minutes figuring out the car choice. Got it all wrong. So if there's one thing to be said, practice. Much like learning a musical instrument or even just maintaining a level of 
performance on your musical instrument. You got to put in the hours. You just got to put in the time. Got to put in. You got to put in the repetitions because you'll learn some things through practicing than if you're to just hop in. I mean, yes, you'll get to a point that you're at a level of proficiency that it can just jump in any car and jump in any course, but you've had those repetitions underneath you where you know every track, every breaking point. You've learned how to pick up that which car breaks in a certain fashion versus another one. And again, same thing like a musical instrument. Somebody throws you a difficult piece of music. Well, you've done those repetitions of learning those skills and learning what your instrument and what you are capable of to be able to pick it up and say, yeah, I can do it. So practice, 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 practice. I think we only got two weeks left of this season before we go into the next season of Downshift Racing. So stay tuned for two more awesome weeks of very competitive close racing. Again, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.